we appreciate you taking the time to join this webinar. I think it is our 23rd out of 34 or something of that nature. Uh, we have two folks here from our Kansas City office, part of our uh, content process automation team, which specializes in a whole host of uh, solutions, including Brainware, Perceptive, formerly known as ImageNow, uh, Highland OnBase, Kofax, Kofax KTA, ReadSoft, to name a few. Yeah. And they're gonna talk about how uh, you could integrate these various ECM solutions with Infor Lawson to improve your business processes. Uh, before I hand off to them, two quick housekeeping items. One is we encourage questions, ask away. My colleague, Mr. Michael Hopkins, will ask throughout the presentation. Second is we'll be recording the session. It takes us a couple of days to get it ready and rendered, but once we have it uploaded, we will email you the link and you can rewatch and share. And with that, I give you Mr. Ben Nichols and Mr. Alex Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Keith. Uh, like he said, we are going to be talking a little bit today about content management within for Lawson and what does that uh, essentially mean. So we're going to take a, a mile eye view of what's going on in the content world and how you can get it working with Lawson. Uh, this is the last for the content process automation team, the last webinar uh, of the series for us. Uh, we will be back in February doing a whole lot more. I'm really excited about the content we have coming up in those. Uh, and to kind of swing into things, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Alex Lindsay. I'm a senior solution architect uh, with RPI Consultants. Uh, I've got over seven years experience uh, working in the ECM space as well as some other uh, OCR and uh, automation <coughs> workflow softwares as well, including KTA. Uh, I'm also a whiskey distiller. Nice. Hi guys, I'm Ben Nichols. I've been uh, working with RPI for a little bit now, um, and I've got four plus years experience designing, implementing, scoping out both best practice solutions and custom business process solutions um, within a wide variety of industries. Uh, a lot of the time I like to focus on accounts payable automation with inside of Infor, and then I also have experience and background working with third party ECM solutions as well. So a little bit about uh, today, we're gonna to be chatting about RPI consultants, learn a little bit more about our business and what we do. Uh, then we'll jump in and chat about what is content management and how it can impact your organization. We'll discuss the differences between document imaging uh, versus enterprise content strategy. And then we'll chat about integrated software solutions and we'll wrap up with some questions and some answers. So a little bit about RPI consultants. Uh, we have over 80 full-time consultants, project managers, uh, technical architects, very smart people, uh, spread across three offices uh, here in Baltimore, uh, Tampa, and then Kansas City, Missouri, where uh, Ben and I hail from. Uh, if you need technical expertise in any of these software suites, so we are partners with all of these, with Highland, that includes Perceptive, OnBase, Brainware, uh, as well as Kofax, <coughs> ReadSoft, uh, and Infor Lawson. Um, we run the gamut of services, upgrades, uh, managed services, um, solution designs, anything that you want uh, to explore, you can do that. Uh, we are also an authorized ECM partner. We are a service provider for perceptive content and on base by Highland. Uh, that includes implementations, upgrades. We do a lot of health checks. We love to come in uh, because there is such a robust, robust client footprint of people across across the country that have these ECMs that have had them for years. Um, it's always great to have a health check and have a resource like Ben or myself come in uh, and look under the hood and find ways and, and take feedback from everyone to see um, what they um, want to improve on. Uh, and that covers the gamut. Really, ECMs can be used in any kind of industry, uh, manufacturing, uh, human resources, AP, uh, and clinical as well. All right, so we are also a certified Infor Loss and Alliance partner. Um, we specialize in industries such as healthcare, public sector, commercial businesses, and a wide variety of other industries as well. Our solution expertise includes financials, which is AP and financial process automation. And then we also have background and experience with inside of human resources, supply chain management, and then more specifically, version 11 Cloud Suite. We've had a lot of customers expressing interest and looking forward to those next updates with inside of the Lawson platform. And we've had the opportunity to work with some customers implementing their version 11 Cloud Suite environments. Additionally, we have experience in payroll and technical services. And that uh, doesn't, that's not the only industries and the only expertises, right. but that's some of our top ones. So we'll be talking a little bit now about what content management is and some of the differences between um, content management as a document imaging repository or content management from an enterprise content strategy. So first off, we really want you to be content 
with your content, uh, <laughs> right? Um, so what is content? It really is all your stuff and stuff includes documents, records, emails, images, any kind of data, process history, just a collection of maybe physical material or digital material that you want to store and retrieve. Um, so ERPs and specifically we'll be talking about Lawson today, typically doesn't uh, have a platform or software to handle content management. So the question really comes down to uh, where is the content stored? Who can see that content? And what content can they see? And then um, when is content viewed and seen? That way you can have things like audit trails and uh, who has viewed that content, so. <clears throat> so when you're considering content management and what to do with all your stuff, essentially, um, there's a few things you really want to consider when you're exploring what to do with all these documents. First off, where does it come from? Um, are you getting them from physical locations? Are they emails? Is it EDI, uh, FTP? What, however you're communicating uh, your documents and how your documents are coming in and out of your organization, no matter what they are, it's important to understand where they come from. Uh, along with that, content a lot of, a lot of times drives workflows. Uh, so if you get a new vendor form, for instance, or uh, tax information from a vendor, you that typically kicks off a process in Infor. Um, what do you do with that? How do you handle that document um, once you get it? Same thing with invoices, same thing with resumes, um, same thing with uh, customer complaints, anything like that. <clears throat> Uh, and as well as another real big consideration is how do you access and retrieve that document? Like Ben yep. mentioned, um, how are you gonna be viewing those documents? Are you walking over to a file cabinet right now and pulling that out? Um, is it shared <coughs> across multiple storage? So a lot of people use SharePoint, a lot of people use Dropbox, a lot of people use Google Drive. Are they spread across uh, all these different platforms? Like where are your documents now? These are the type of considerations uh, to think about when you're considering uh, content management. Really what it comes down to are content management features and what you get within an ECM. So you get document and data capture. So with an ECM, you get uh, the ability to capture documents. There's a plethora of agents across the different ECM suites that allow you to do it and streamline it directly into a workflow. Um, within content uh, management, you also have the ability to index and organize. So like I mentioned before, if you're using SharePoint, a lot of times uh, you're just, you just have a file name. So maybe you're putting a lot of stuff in that file name for that document that you saved. Um, there's really not a lot of context around that. Um, with an ECM, you have the ability to index it uh, and retrieve it in a more structured format. So when you want to find data this way, you look in this specific value <coughs> because it makes sense. And like I mentioned earlier, it drives workflows. Within an ECM, you can easily, from the point of capture or post capture, just kick off a workflow process to manage those document flows. And after that process, you can actually store, uh, store those documents and retrieve them at a later date. And the other big feature of uh, content management that like, let's say, um, just normal repositories like Dropbox or SharePoint or anything like that, um, a lot of them have uh, retention policy uh, tools in place. So it's essentially a process to remove documents. So maybe you are a company that's very paper heavy right now and you have Iron Mountain coming around every once in a while to shred a bunch of documents. Well, there's a policy in place uh, which for when you can you know, basically remove those documents. With an ECM, it's the same thing. Um, because they're electronic, you still need to have space. So you're not physically taking up space necessarily anymore, but you are taking up storage on a server somewhere. And if you don't need those documents uh, and you have more documents coming in, just save that storage and let a retention policy manager kind of handle those uh, types of things. Yep. So now we'll be talking a little bit about document imaging versus uh, ECM. So document imaging really is the concept of simple capture and store software. Um, very ERP or department centric and it's a low implementation slash support cost comparative. It's not shareable within the entire organization, so it's very specific to those unique uh, business processes for that department or area with inside of the business. And it also ends up missing the lack of flexibility um, for workflow processes and then security as well, because it doesn't encompass everything. And on the flip side, uh, enterprise content management, or what we've been referring to as ECM, really is more of a robust and flexible capture index workflow and retention system. It integrates with multiple ERPs, specifically today we're talking about Lawson, mm -hmm. but um, other business systems are also able to integrate with enterprise content management. Typically there is a higher cost of implementation and support, 
but those costs are shareable across departments because you can integrate all of those processes and unique <coughs> um, aspects of your entire organization into one solution for content management. So next up, uh, one of the offerings directly from Lawson, very recent, and is now included with inside of Lawson version 11, is Info Document Management. So you maybe have heard a little bit about Info Document Management. It's referred to as IDM. Um, it has ECM functionality with inside of the Lawson environment. It gives you some initial content management features and functionality, allowing you to manually upload those uh, digital documents and such we were talking about, whether it's emails, invoices, supporting documentation, into an area with inside of the Lawson platform. So for a long time, Lawson has uh, not had this functionality, and that's kind of where ECMs like Perceptive Content and OnBase have kind of come in to fill that gap. And so we're now seeing loss and push for document management and content management within inside of the platform, which is long term going to be really great for loss and customers specifically, because you're going to be able to have a one stop shop for your data and your content management. Few things with this, um, we'll be looking at an example of some of the cool functionality with IDM here in the next slide. But I want to talk a little bit about um, IDM realistically. And right now, um, it's been released recently with inside of version 11. Um, just this last month in November, uh, Lawson re uh, released the capture piece of Info Document Management, which actually facilitates the scanning of documents, some OCR functionality and such. Um, so those functionalities are now rolling into Info Document Management. It's a, it's a new uh, entrant into the arena, so it's lacking some of those other features that we've seen in other ECMs, but they're working hard to get in full full function and last mile functionality into the system. Um, some things that are here to come would be syncing data between IDM and Cloud Suite Financials, um, actual additional document types that support a wide variety of other documents, and data creation with inside of Cloud Suite. Additionally, there's some desire to see the solution actually export data like 1099 documents and creation. And that's still not there in the software yet, but is here to come in the next few quarters starting next year. So on our next slide here, I just wanted to show pretty cool functionality associated with Info Document Management. What you're going to see if you had the joy of uh, joining us for our previous uh, webinar earlier today on content management. We're actually back inside of Cloud Suite Financials uh, version 11, and we're in the invoice processing section where we have the ability to see our invoices and the statuses those invoices are in. But here to the very right of that document, we've actually got something called the contextual app. And what that does is that has the ability to pull in information associated with whatever item you have selected with inside of Cloud Suite. So in our example here, we're gonna see we have an M4 supplier invoice. We're going to see the image of the invoice. And then if we were to scroll down in this, we would actually have the document keys associated with each invoice line. So we'd see things like the invoice number of INV 181 and the vendor and the company and so on below the image. Additionally, if you were working and creating invoices with inside of the um, AP automation solution, you could manually upload the invoice image to the document and have it accessible there. Now, one caveat with this I want to um, just point out, right now, uh, one key functionality with IDM, specific to the AP automation solutions, is that the IDM attached document is not accessible to the approvers just yet. That functionality is going to be coming here, uh, it's supposed to be quarter one of 2019. Um, so there are some other processes related to AP invoices specifically in order to get the invoice available and accessible to the approvers. So IDM doesn't necessarily accomplish everything just yet, but it is getting there. And then last, on our far right, we've got a listing of some of the document types available, accounting entities, assets, deposits, asset items, invoices, cash receipts, cash payment. Just out of the box, there's about 88 different document types. And this contextual app, additionally, not only does it work with inside of the AP automation screen, but for example, in version 11, if you were to jump to um, your vendor screen or uh, your payment screen, and there's pieces of data associated directly with this invoice, you'd actually be able to see this invoice on that screen as well. It's got some of that logic built in to see what screen you're on, what piece of data you're accessing, and see if it has any referenceable uh, invoice images or other images stored in IDM. 
So kind of jumping forward into integrated software solutions. So how would you use this? Um, if you are just storing documents, if you're an Infor client and you're just storing documents pretty much all over the place, how would you integrate some of your departments and your solutions uh, with an ECM? Uh, first and foremost, there's also uh, accounts payable automation, which we talk about uh, ad nauseum. In fact, our <laughs> previous webinar was about that. So you can, if for invoice processing, for your accounts payable, uh, processing, so you, all those financials documents that uh, Ben was just talking about, um, you could front end um, your document capture with one of these OCR technologies, OCR meaning optical character recognition, um, where we can basically scan or email a document in, it extracts data off of that, compares it versus Lawson, uh, and validates it, uh, can push it through an API workflow, <clears throat> or even through an ECM workflow, but ultimately uh, the documents will end up within uh, a perceptive software or an on base uh, by Highland to basically have them retrieved, have them searched, anything like that. Uh, another one is the vendor setup, um, and there's also a vendor portal as well. Uh, so new vendors, you get your tax documents. Uh, you typically, in an ECM type solution, you would capture the document into something like Perceptive or OnBase. Uh, you'd have the document up. You would enter, uh, it would enter a short workflow where you would enter that vendor information uh, into Lawson uh, to process that vendor record, and then create a link uh, to that document within the ECM itself so you can basically later uh, find it. Um, with that, you can also do a lot of embedded links yeah. um, within Lawson to retrieve those documents at a later date from there, or you can just have it searchable within the ECM. Uh, subsequently, the uh, Kofax offers a Readsoft Supplier Portal, um, which is a great tool uh, to kind of improve your partnership um, with a lot of your suppliers. Um, it, there's a lot of self-service access, so uh, your vendors can submit invoices to you there, they can track where it is, where the payment is, uh, you can flip POs to invoices. Um, there's a lot of integration there with Infor as well uh, to kind of give a little bit more of a content management uh, feel to your documents that are coming in and out. Uh, and again, with that, that would flow nicely into uh, an ECM product like Perceptive uh, or OnBase. So uh, employee records management, this is kind of in the HR process. If we looked at this process specifically with inside of content management, we consider like the recruiting process or the onboarding of employees into your organization. These workflows with inside of content management, with inside of solutions like OnBase or Perceptive can facilitate not only the scanning of an application um, or supporting documentation for that employee, but it can also help handle the workflow for the onboarding portion of it. So maybe you've emailed out to your new potential employee that they need to pass in some tax related information and documentation. They send it back to you. That can be handled with inside of the workflow of content management. Additionally, this can accommodate the entire recruiting process, onboarding, compensation and bonus information or handling specific and unique scenarios like contractors. <clears throat> right, so it's great for workflow processing in that sense as well. Uh, they can also include form processing. Um, and not to mention the HDM sphere as well, content management is great for that. Yep. Uh, some, some additional products and opportunities around that. So we've mentioned uh, on base and Highland, but those really are like two of the best ECMs out there, in our opinion yep. anyway, but they really are. <laughs> they're very robust. Yes. Um, they're, very, they're very scalable. Um, they all, both have workflow components that are great, capture methods that are, com that are great, uh, and integrations with N4 that work really well. Uh, you can also throw in there intelligent data capture, so Kofax, KTA, which I mentioned, uh, or Brainware by Highland, and there's also Readsoft specifically for invoices. Um, but essentially, <coughs> you can use these intelligent data capture tools uh, to extract data from any document, really. Uh, KTA and Brainware specifically aren't geared for just invoice processing or one thing or another. You can actually use these tools to extract data off of any type of document that you really have. Uh, as long as we can apply logic and validation around it, those tools are great for that. Uh, and there's also digital forms. Those are great for integrating uh, with an ECM as well. So if you have a workflow process in place, uh, like a form submittal, you can actually use Yoga Forms, uh, which is a, a product that we maintain, that we've built up, uh, to basically say, hey, I want to submit uh, an expense report would be one, or a new employee, or a re check request, or something like that. You can use Yoga Forms to kick that process off in a workflow, um, create a document within the ECM, uh, and integrate directly with N4 after that. So overall, uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of 
um, what content management can look like when you are an N4 customer, if you've got documents all over the place, or maybe you actually have uh, an on-base or perceptive right now, but you don't have all your departments. Uh, we really encourage our clients to leverage that. Get your ROI from your ECM if you can. If you don't have one yet, um, then really start exploring what that could look like for you guys and your departments. Uh, we'll open up for questions now. All right, just a reminder, if you've got questions, feel free to put those into the GoToMeeting interface. Uh, first question we have is, uh, how does ECM, or how does my image now, uh, integrate, uh, integrate with V11 Cloud Suite? All right, no, I can take that. Um, so very much like it integrates with version 9 and version 10 right now, there's a lot of uh, different venues that you can get the data back into Lawson Cloud Suite version 11. And it doesn't necessarily change very drastically. It's just where you're going to put that and place that data in. There's a slew of opportunities. So you can use um, API or API web service calls and things like that. You can use, um, we do have an in-house connector, um, Yoga Connect, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, that we can use to pass that data in as well. And then ultimately, if it comes down to a solution where we have to utilize flat files, there are means and mechanisms to import that data as well through custom IPA flows or spreadsheet designer. Just it depends on each customer's unique solution and need. Right. So if you have image now, for instance, application yep. plan should still work as well for the whole screen scrape technology yep. uh, to get the data off of there. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, other than one you, the ones you've mentioned, what are the top uh, department opportunities for uh, ECM workflows and integration? With Envor, I mean, I'm going to say financials, yep. <laughs> automatic, like invoice processing. Um, there's been a lot of money invested into softwares to automate these processes, and the clients that we've deployed these for have it's worked really well for them, and they've seen a lot of ROI in streamlining that. <laughs> I would say employee management as well. Yep. Um, any employee comes with a load of, not baggage, but documentation. Uh, a lot of do documents out there associated with employee. I've probably got a file this big. Keith probably knows what's in there. Um, but all those documents need to be stored somewhere. So I think uh, employee management is it's a big one. Is a really big one as well. Yeah, HR related tasks, healthcare as well. There's processes with inside of the healthcare environment that definitely has benefit utilizing something like an ECM and, and perceptive content to manage those workflows. All right, uh, one more question. Is there a license fee associated with yoga forms and how many forms can I use? Uh, no, there is a, it's just a one-time setup essentially um, and you can basically just set up as many. Um, when you engage with us, we'll typically set up one or two forms for you uh, and then basically just hand it off from there. Great, thank you guys very much. Wonderful presentation. Certainly there's a lot of content related to yoga on our YouTube site. If you go to YouTube, <coughs> type in RPI Consultants, as well as many other uh, webinars from the Content Process Automation team here at RPI, including Mr. Alex Lindsay and Ben Nichols. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you guys for presenting. Uh, and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you guys. February, first Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>